Hey, gym owners, Matthew Becker here from Gym Lawyers PLLC. Now, before we get into the topic of this video, let me just remind you that all of the material contained in this video is meant for educational purposes only. You can't take it as actual legal advice. Your situation may be different than the situations that we're talking about in this video. And the topic of this video not only is very fact specific, but also probably needs to be reviewed by an accountant anyway. So if you have very specific questions, reach out to us at gymlawyers.com. In this video, we want to talk about the proper designation of the people who work for you. When we're talking about the designation, we're talking about the tax designation. As an owner of a company, you probably heard terms being thrown around like W-2 employees or 1099 independent contractors, and you may be wondering what those designations mean. Well, a W-2 is simply the form that you file at the end of the year that designates somebody to the IRS or the federal government that they are an employee of yours. And we'll talk a little bit about what that means. On the other hand, we have the independent contractor in the 1099. Again, that's just the number of the form that you or your tax accountant is going to file with the IRS that shows the money that you paid out to an individual as an independent contractor. The problem that we run into oftentimes when we talk to gym owners like you is that you want the trainer to be the independent contractor you pay them as an independent contractor, but you actually treat them like an employee, and this can create some serious problems. Why? Because at some point, you may be audited by the IRS. And when that happens, the IRS is going to look at your relationship with your trainers, with your workers. And if you aren't paying them as employees, but you should be, that can mean some very serious criteria or financial issues down the road. So what I want to cover in this video is what you need to do and how you need to treat your trainers in order to actually have them designated as valid 1099 independent contractors so that you can just pay them whatever it is that they earn each month and you don't have to worry about taking the taxes out yourself. So when we look at this, the IRS is going to primarily look at three different criteria. The first criteria is going to be the behavior criteria, and this is your relationship with your trainers or your workers based on how much you control their behavior. Do you control when they come in? Do you control the amount of time that they work? Do you tell them what they have to do from point A to point B? Do you have standard operating procedures or the proper way to run a class? And because of that, there's a certain path they have to take, right? There's certain things that they have to do. There's certain exercises that they have to demonstrate or they have to explain or they have to make sure that get done during the class. Do you provide them training, okay, of a particular way maybe that, that you want something to be done? If all of this is yes, then this person is going to be more of an employee. So how do we make them an independent contractor? Well, unfortunately, you have to take away all of the controls. The IRS is going to question, do you care about how the job is done or do you only care about the end product? If you only care about the end product, then you can designate the person as an independent contractor. So an example of this might be, although I don't know why you would do it this way, uh, hey, trainers, we have all of these classes available this week. I can't tell you when to come in and, and, and coach these classes, but you have the availability to come in and sign your name into this calendar to choose the class in which you want to coach. That's an independent contractor. They have the ability to come and go as they please. Or you can say, hey guys, whenever you're coaching a class, you have the freedom to coach anything that you want just as long as the client is happy at the end. And maybe they, they stay members. That's an independent contractor. They can do whatever it is that they want. The second criteria that the IRS is going to look at is the financial criteria. How are you paying your trainer? Are you paying them hourly? Are you paying them lump sum for the job in which they perform? Right? Are you only paying them if they work? Right? If you're paying somebody $1,000 a month in order to coach 10 hours a month of classes, you know, whatever, that would be an extreme wage, but you get my point, um, then they're probably an employee because you're paying them 
$1,000 a month, you're paying them a designated amount and you're requiring them to work a certain amount versus an independent contractor, a private trainer who comes in and they only get paid if they have a client, right? They eat what they kill. They go out, they find a client, they bring it in, they use your facility, they charge the client and you make a piece of that. That's an independent contractor, but only if they're paying the trainer and the trainer turns around and pays you essentially as rent for the facility. The third criteria is the relationship criteria, similar to the behavior criteria, but this is sort of your relationship, your long-term standing with this, with this trainer. Do you expect this trainer to be around for a long time? They're going to be more of an employee. Do you give them paid time off? Do you give them sick leave? All right, this is all more employee stuff versus if they're coming in as a one-off, right? If they're only at your gym for as long as they have their own private training clients, then they're an independent contractor. If they're only coming in one Saturday afternoon to run a seminar and that's it, then they're an independent contractor. Okay, if it's short term or undesignated length of time, then they lean more toward an independent contractor. So take some of this into consideration. Right? If you have a lot of questions about it, reach out to us because you want to make sure that you get this designation correct in the beginning so that down the road, if you get audited, you don't end up having to pay a whole bunch of back pay because you didn't designate them as properly as an employee in the long run. A lot of the information out there tells you to pay them as an independent contractor, but actually has you treat them as employees. Guys, hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, we're here to help. Reach out to us at gymlawyers.com.